try out this fractured checkerboard op art drawing. It's like a puzzle, but it's also a work of art. Op art is short for optical art, and that is a style of art that uses optical illusions that are usually black and white. However, you can use whatever color scheme you would like. I put an eye in the middle of mine because I'm extra, but you could simply make it a circle. I will walk you through how to do this with a pencil and a ruler, and you need something to trace to create your squares, or you can simply use the ruler. I'm gonna be using a marker, but you use whatever material that you would prefer, even a pencil. If you love learning about art and want to support my channel, hit that subscribe button. Starting out with your pencil, find a central point in the middle of your paper. Now, you can do this with just a circle, a small dot, or I'm gonna make the center of my optical illusion an eye, because why not? If you're interested in a really detailed eye tutorial, click the link above. Next, you're going to take your ruler and always start at the central point, which is that circle in the center of your paper. And you're going to then take your lines, and I always like the first one to hit the corner of the paper, and then one that goes directly straight up and down, and you're gonna fan out your lines from your central point off the edge of your paper, and it's going to look like sun rays um, with really nice lines that kind of follow around the circular point on the edges of your paper. Now, I'm gonna show you a way easier way to do this in just a minute, and it just didn't occur to me um, to do both sides, and I'll show you what I mean. And you can see I'm also putting my um, line all the way off the corner there. So what you wanna do is line up each line with the one you did before, okay? So an easier way to do that, uh, do both lines at the same time. So I just realized at this moment like, oh, so I can lay my ruler down like this. I can do the top and bottom at the same time. So don't be like me, make sure to do it so not only everything's nice and organized, but your op art drawing will have a nice even geometry to it. easy way I was talking about. Start out with your ruler and go from corner to corner drawing your first line, then repeat on from top to bottom corner on the other side. This is also going to help you find dead center. So once you have your central point, then you can go back in and make it a circle from there. So as you can see, this is where the two points meet, and I didn't stop at the center, I didn't draw it first, and then I extended off both sides. So either way works. This is just an easier way to do it and to have that nice, perfect geometry. So you can see ruler all the way through. Then I move it from top to bottom this way. And it's just a little bit of a different vibe. So both are correct. This is just the easier, mathier way to do things. And I could still make that circle an eye if I wanted to. I can also take my ruler and divide it into even smaller lines. And you can go crazy and make your lines as small um, or as thick as you would like. And now for the optical illusion, you want to draw two squares that overlap each other and also overlap your central point. I'm going to be tracing a sticky note because I'm really not great at straight lines and edges. And then that way I know that my square is actually square. Um, you could do this, it doesn't have to be a perfect square, my paper isn't. So you could use a driver's license, a credit card, <laughs> if you have one of those laying around. Or if you're really good at making a perfect square, you could use your ruler to do that as well. But I think a sticky note is just a nice, um, handy way to get your squares. So the optical illusion here is you're going to fracture or break your checkerboard into different sections. Okay, so there's my first square. Notice it overlaps my central point, which is my eye. And then your second one needs to overlap your first square and your central point. Other than that, you can put it pretty much anywhere. So I'm taking my ruler so I have a perfect line, but I'm using uh, my sticky note as a straight edge. Now for the key step of organizing your checkerboard. Take your pencil and place a tiny dot in every other section. So start on the outside because things are gonna get complicated as you go in. I'm a visual learner, so I have to see it to learn it. And so because I know for a fact that my checkerboard on the outer edge is perfect, um, I know I'm not gonna mess that up. I'm gonna go ahead and color in um, with black 
the spaces I've already organized. And then this way I'll truly understand the more complicated fractured part of the overlapping squares over the checkerboard. I'll really understand what to do. So I'm using a Sharpie and I'm starting by outlining each line and then coloring it in. Now a Sharpie uh, is not the material I would use first. So I would use um, a Crayola marker or any marker that you have, but the marker I was using in the very beginning, I knew it wouldn't last for this whole piece of paper and I lost my Crayola marker. So my best solution here is to use a Sharpie. I um, mean, the reason why I say I wouldn't use it is just it, it smells, so it might give you a headache. It's a little bit more expensive, um, but it is a really bold, nice, permanent look. So if you have a Sharpie to spare, you won't be disappointed. So I'm gonna zoom things up, speed it along, because it's as simple as coloring in a solid color the areas that you've organized for your checkerboard. It has a really nice diagonal effect to it, and it already looks really nice. If you don't have markers, you can use any art material, even a pencil. So also think about what colors you would like to use. I'm using black because I love the black and white contrast. Now put a mark next to each stripe that is white. So in my head, I'm always thinking black and white, black and white, black and white. So if the stripe is white, it needs a black stripe next to it. If the section's black, it needs a white section next to it. So I'm doing that in the outer sections again. So I'm not going to do the inside part with the eye because that's gonna flip flop again. So I'm looking and again, just black and white, black and white. So I'm going back in now with my marker and I'm going to make sure that this is still a checkerboard pattern. So every other, every other. And now I'm gonna color in the sections in both of the outside edges of the square. It's called op art because it's an optical illusion. So because it's rotating every other, it's gonna create this really cool fractured checkerboard appearance. It doesn't really look like it yet, but just wait when you get in that inside, um, the inside part of where your eye is, that overlapping area. And that's why it's important to overlap because the optical illusion relies on every other or dividing it up into sections so that you can flip flop your pattern from black to white. I'm going to speed things up a little bit so this video isn't 30 minutes of me just coloring in solid sections. Okay, that already looks super cool and now it's time for the overlapping section in the middle. So using the same principle of black, white, black, white, go through and carefully mark each section and they're gonna be your smallest ones according to whether it needs to be black or white. Take your time, don't second guess yourself and just check your work as you go. Because my Sharpie lost its point, I have a fine tip Sharpie that I'm gonna go through and color in those smaller sections. Okay, I'm going back to this one. I skipped it. It really confused me as to whether it should be black or white, but now I can see, I can visualize what color it needs to be. So if there's ever a section that confuses you, mark it with what you think, color in what you're comfortable with, and you can always go back and fill it in once you're sure. I think outlining the small lines with the marker first and then filling it in is the best way to ensure your best craftsmanship, which is time, care, effort, and attention to detail in a work of art. And I'm gonna fill everything in right up to my eye. You definitely could go back to your ruler and use that to make perfect lines. I tend to be rebellious and like to avoid my ruler whenever possible, but that would make sure, of course, that your lines are an absolute perfect geometry, something that my artwork rarely is. So this is the hardest section simply because of the small spaces, um, but it doesn't take a lot of time because the surface area is smaller. So you can see the fractured checkerboard, the overlap in the middle is super important because it's your third area. So you have like the outer edges, the two squares, and then where they meet in the middle. And that really kind of pushes that section. Is it coming towards me or is it going back? Now I'm taking my Sharpie and outlining the eye, which again is optional. You could simply have a small dot or circle to go towards, but I just like adding a little bit of a fun detail to it. And it would be really fun to experiment with making the center any shape. I'm going back through and making sure that any wobbly line is corrected. And I have this idea of adding a little bit of color to the eye. Why not? Everything's black and white. So what if I made that green so it really catches your eye? <laughs> really catches your eye in the center. Um, again, all of this is optional. And maybe if I were to do this again, I would try it with circles or any other shape like a triangle that might have that really interesting fractured effect. 
Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more op art tutorials, I've got you covered. Check these out.